Coming up on today's Airborne, a dollar a gallon app gas is coming in October, Texas passes a tough UAV law, and David Riggs remains are identified. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The Redbird Skyport Fly More app gas experiment, otherwise known as the Buck a Gallon event, will kick off in a couple of weeks. And here are some details you may need to know. The purpose of this experiment is to study the effect that fuel price has on flying activity. The offer of a dollar a gallon app gas is open to any piston powered GA aircraft that can fly into San Marcos Municipal Airport under its own power. Only the regular tanks in the aircraft will be filled. To maintain a reliable supply for everyone, the fueling limit is 200 gallons per aircraft per day at the promotional price. No one believed to be violating the spirit of the experiment will be refueled. The $1 price is valid for the entire month of October during normal operating hours. There may be lines to get gassed, so if you expect to be in a hurry, it's recommended that you pre-register on the website or by calling Redbird in advance. Data collected from pilots during the month will be aggregated before publication. Absolutely no individual personal information will be shared. The state of Texas has made it a crime to take photographs of someone's property without their consent using a UAV. That new law went into effect September 1st. The law stemmed from an incident in which someone flying an RC airplane captured images of a creek apparently filled with pig's blood. The photos, which were captured incidentally to the flight, led to fines being imposed against a meatpacking plant for illegal dumping. Now taking such photos is punishable by a fine of up to $500. Civil penalties of up to $10,000 can be collected from the photographer if the person or organization whose property is photographed can show that they were collected or distributed with malice. The law provides exemptions for law enforcement, scholarly research, journalist and real estate professionals. The remains of David G. Riggs, a multiple convicted felon, con man and errant pilot, were pulled from a Chinese lake by a dive and recovery team and identified. David Riggs described himself falsely as a world champion pilot and aviation entrepreneur, but with pretty much little to no evidence available to back up those claims. He was, however, best known for his FAA violations, criminal arrest, and eventual conviction for a stunt in Southern California, in which he buzzed the Santa Monica Pier at over 250 knots and at a very low level in an L-39. And yet another revocation when an illegal Warburg ride operation operated with incredible adventures, resulted in the deaths of two people. Riggs perished in a crash of a Lancer 320 while attempting to fly low enough to ski his mains along the surface of a lake in China. An 18-year-old female Chinese interpreter was also killed in the crash. A Legionnaire has taken 30 of its MD-80 aircraft out of service. The move came after the FAA said it became aware that a Legionnaire may not have inspected some emergency evacuation slides on its MD-80 fleet at required intervals. The agency learned about the issue while investigating an emergency evacuation of a Legionnaire Flight 436 at McCarran International Airport on September 16th, in which all passengers were safely evacuated. The airline said in a news release that it has already begun the reinspections and expects to complete the process by the end of September. MD-80 aircraft will be placed back in service as soon as possible after the slides pass reinspection, although a number of flights may be delayed or canceled during the process. A Facebook page established by a longtime volunteer at the Sun and Fun Fly-In in Lakeland, Florida, calls on others concerned about the future of the event to address what he says are serious problems, particularly with the current board of directors. Dale Fox established the page on which he stresses that it is not his intent to cause harm to sun and fun. Rather, he says it is a call to action for other volunteers to work with him to make changes in how the event is organized and run. Fox says that the current board does not have our best interest at heart and that the focus is on the bottom line that the board does not pay attention to the dwindling number of visitors or vendors. 
Last year, Fox established an unofficial volunteer advisory committee made up of about 25 longtime volunteers at the event. Now he says the board should make his unofficial committee official with a say in who is elected to that board. The Sudden Fun organization has historically been extremely intolerant of dissent or criticism, even to the point of harassment and other unsavory conduct. So we hope they'll dial it down in regards to Fox's long overdue critique and actually listen to those who only want to see the event survive and prosper. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Cygnus cargo spacecraft was launched aboard its Antares rocket at 10.58 Eastern Time on Wednesday from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport Pad 0A at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. Orbital is building and testing its Antares rocket and Cygnus spacecraft under NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services program. The successful completion of the COTS demonstration mission will pave the way for Orbital to conduct eight planned cargo resupply flights. NASA's other cargo resupply provider, Space Exploration Technologies, SpaceX, began delivering regular cargo missions to the space station in 2012. MGL Avionics has released a firmware update for the Explorer EFIS designed for the sport and experimental aircraft markets. The new firmware gives pilots the ability to select screen layouts by simply selecting engine options, fuel options, and more, resulting in different default screen layouts without the need to create custom screens. MGL said on its blog that the upgrade makes the EFIS system more plug-and-play than ever before. The upgrade applies only to the Explorer model of the system. MGL also recently introduced its Challenger EFIS, which features a larger screen. The NTSB has issued a final rule to implement several changes to its rules of practice applicable to aviation certificate enforcement appeals. Tom Patton reports. This final rule responds to public comments received by the NTSB as a result of an interim final rule or IFR it issued last October. The NTSB issued the IFR after the enactment of the Pilots' Bill of Rights legislation and it became effective on its publication in the Federal Register on October 16, 2012. The interim rule implemented the requirements of the Pilots' Bill of Rights, which grants pilots certain rights when enforcement actions are being taken against them. Under the interim rule, an FAA certificate holder is permitted to submit a motion to dismiss an FAA complaint if the FAA fails to dispose releasable portions of the EIR. The NTSB received 10 comments in response to the rule, and the final rule describes these comments in detail as most of the comments provided substantive feedback and suggestions. The NTSB determined it should include a proposal to extend the Enforcement Investigative Report Availability Requirement in the Pilot's Bill of Rights to emergency enforcement cases. As a result, the NTSB is also publishing a new NPRM in conjunction with publication of the final rule in the Federal Register. Comments on the new NPRM are open until October 21st. The final rule went into effect immediately. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week.
Before raging floodwaters focused attention on the state of Colorado and New Mexico, the world watched as California's Yosemite National Park was ravaged by a wildfire. In our Arrow Video of the Week, you get the rare opportunity to ride along as a Mass 6 team flies in on a fire support mission. Search YouTube for Mass 6 Rimfire 22 August 13. A routine flying mission became a major achievement for the Missouri Air National Guard's 131st Bomb Wing when Major Luke Jane surpassed 1,000 flying hours in the B-2 Spirit on September 14. Fewer than 600 active duty Air Force and Air National Guard pilots have flown the B-2 bomber, and of those, only 35 have logged 1,000 flying hours or more. Just 13 still actively fly the B-2 stealth bomber. Currently, the weapons and tactics officer for the 110th Bomb Squadron attached to the 325th Weapons School, Jane also has flying time in the T-37 and the T-38 as an instructor pilot. Bombardier Aerospace is planning its 17th annual Safety Stand Down USA to be held in Wichita, Kansas from September 30th to October 3rd of 2013. The plane maker says safer skies are the mission of the safety stand down program. Its mission is achieved by creating a community of aviation professionals committed to lifelong learning and to higher standards of safety and professionalism throughout the industry. All safety aviation professionals, regardless of aircraft type operated, are invited to attend Stand Down USA free of charge. A highlight of Safety Stand Down USA will be the presentation of the second annual Eugene Cernan Safety Award. By its namesake, Captain Eugene Cernan, retired NASA commander of Apollo 17. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, September 24. And I'm actually going to be gone the next two weeks as I'm getting married on Saturday, but don't worry, Airborne's not going anywhere. You'll be in very capable hands as Jim Campbell, Tom Patton, and Glenn Moyer will be taking over hosting duties. So check out aero-news.net for updates on those upcoming programs. In the meantime, you know the drill. You can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.